this is going to be a different type of video today. Um, I know I haven't made a video in a, quite a long time, and I do apologize for that. But here we've got this master lock. Basically, it's a cash box, a little cash box. And you just put the key in, turn it. Oops, there you go. Open it up. Put your Bitcoin in there. Roll of collector, collector's items, silver, flash drive. Now, a lot of people think that these are very secure. Now, they are, I guess, if you're going to be using them for just transferring stuff from, say, to the bank. Now, use a standard kind of lock. Just, oh, sorry about that. Take your key, stick it in, turn it, and it opens up the tumblers and turns this. Now, I'm going to show you something. These are not secure, and I'm going to show you why. Now, this may be kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to try and manage. Um, if I can, I'm going to show you the tools that we're going to use. First is just this. This is a lock pick that is made out of just a broken piece of hacksaw blade. And this is just a small screwdriver. Now, this is basically going to be a very, 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 very quick video. There goes my dish. Um, on lock picking. Now, I'm going to try. This is going to be interesting. Here's my coat. Let me basically... Okay, one sec. Here's the key. Let me pretty much take everything out of this so then it's easier for me. Let's take a couple of pennies. Bitcoin. Bitcard. These are cool. Silver. More silver. I got some more silver coming too, so um, I'll give you a cool video about that. This is private, so we won't show that. Okay, it's empty. Now it does. This is a good tray. It is cool. It comes with a removable tray, and then yeah. Put it back. Lock it up. And for the heck of it, let's just stand it up. Show or not? Okay. One second. I do apologize. Um. This might work. Yes. Kind of. There we go. Okay. First, you're going to want to see which way this turns to open. Now, that is pretty easily obtainable by basically sticking your lock pick in. Oh, by the way, this is a wafer lock. So it uses little wafers inside. Now, if I turn the pick that way, it does move. If I turn it that way, it does move. So what you're going to want to do, this is actually kind of hard to do with this hand, is basically get your little itty bitty screwdriver and stick it in and gently push to that side very gently just enough so that it turns and then you take your pick and you st stick it in and while turning you kind of rake across the pins and look I've opened the lock it opens I'll just show that again, show people that uh, this is actually real. Here's the key. Now, another th common misconception is that it has two tumblers on both sides, two rows of pins. It actually only has one row of pins. It's just that this is a dual-sided, oh, sorry, it's a dual-sided key, so you can use it either that way or that way. It only uses on that side. So I'm taking the pin, locking it, 
can't open it. It's actually easier to put your pick in first. Pick in. Tiny screwdriver. Turn. This is being a little more difficult this time. Come on. There we go. Open. Now, this, of course, is not a good storage solution long term for your valuables. A lot of people do use these long term for their valuables, and it is not a good idea to do. I highly don't suggest it. Um, the only way that this is this is actually a decent thing is if you are going to be storing them short term, to deposit to a bank, um, say if it's a bunch of cash, or if you do decide to put your silver in a safe deposit box, even though I highly don't suggest it, um, then yeah, you got a bit yourself a bit of a problem. Get yourself a proper safe. Um, don't get one of these little ones that uses like the the electronic locks because those are easy to bypass as well. Get one that's actually got a, a good key, like a good lock, not one of these, and also one that is um, has tumblers, dual dual tumblers actually, like combination tumblers are really good, as well as then one with a key. Um, I know some really good safes that have dual tumblers and a key and you have to put both two combinations in and turn the key and it will open. This will not open and in fact, or this will open really easy. Um, I got my pick. See I'm sticking the pick in. It goes all the way through the lock. Now, you can replace these locks probably quite easily. Um, it's just a retaining clip here that you pop out and then you can kind of wiggle the lock out and then replace it with something that's actually decent. <laughs> um, another thing that you got to worry about if you're really, really, really conscious about security is something called um, bump keying. What that is, is you get basically a blank key with... Where's my house keys, actually? One sec. Something like 80% of locks are actually vulnerable to this. Um, so there's... Right now, if you basically take this and grind it so that there is bumps that are the minimum size of the tumblers, like just pop them open just a little bit. And basically, what you do is this, I can kind of do it on this is you stick it in until you get just to the last tumbler. So that's kind of hard to see, but like that. And what you're going to want to do is get a, I'll do a separate video on this as soon as I can get a, a bump key, but you turn it the way very ever so softly and you get a hammer or a screwdriver end and you basically hit it very sharply on the end, like that end so it goes in. Actually it works. Oh no, never mind. This is the key. Dirt. Um, but what that does is simple law of physics. It shoots the tumblers up, and most of the time they will, because the turning, they'll lock at the shear line as they're either going up or down, and then it will just turn open the lock. That is a very big problem with most consumer locks. Even, um, it can even be done on certain kinds of mail keys as well. So yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Um, I should have more videos soon. Um, next one I'm actually going to film is on these.